So it's hard for me to believe that it's four years since you jumped on the scene at Louisville. <sighs> Heisman along the way, and now here you are, uh, quarterback in the first place team in the NFL. Does it feel that fast for you, this entire journey? It, it do. It, it do. When I think about it, I, I always have flashbacks, like catch myself thinking about college. Like, and I was just here. Uh, I just walked in the building in Louisville. I just walked into Betty Johnson, like the, the freshman dorm. And now I'm here, it's like, it's amazing. What was the highlight of that uh, Louisville time for you? 2016, that was the best year I had. You know, um, not just individual, but like the guys who I was around, who I surrounded myself with, my teammates, we bonded. You know, it was like a brotherhood. And I enjoyed it. Like, I, I feel like that year, I, it, it won't go away. Yeah, jumping over guys. Oh. My Syracuse guys, you, you did this bad there. You know that, right? Man, we were just, I, I, just, I just feel Coach Petrino gave us a great game plan. You know, um, we studied those guys. Um, it was the f one of the first games. I, I feel like it was the second game of the season. It was early, yeah. And I just had to show people what I was made of. You know, I had that rookie year, uh, beat Texas and them. Um, I just had to build from that. What was that Heisman experience like, being around all those guys? It was the when you won the Heisman, there's all those hands you were shaking. You, like, couldn't believe it. What was that like for you? Like a real one. Okay. You know, I, like, I, couldn't, I couldn't believe it. Like, it's unbelievable growing up watching those guys, and then when you actually accomplish something that they did, and then you just, they just welcome you with open arms, it's pretty cool. So your style as a quarterback is always talked about because of your running ability. But mm -hmm. I, I need you to take me back to young Lamar Jackson uh -huh. and take me back to your mom. How important was your mom, not on your life, but on your football career? Very important. Uh, sh I was the guy, I just go out there and play. You know, but I, I didn't want to prepare the right way, correct way. Like, you know, go take a run, go take a jog, get your stamina up, stuff like that. My mom would make us do it. Like me and my brother, my younger brother, she'd be like, let's go outside, we're going to work out. I'm like, man, I want to go outside and play, stuff like that. And she just instilled that in us, just, you know, some guy might get hurt, but you're going to be, you know, doing better because you, you um working when no one else is, basically. And know? she was truly your first coach. Yeah, basically, yeah, she was. And not just you, but... At McNair Park? Yep, kids all around. You know, kids love her. She, she talked to the kids, and she made them go out there and play harder. So it's, it's pretty cool to now, watch that. Mom know her football? She know her football. Yeah? I don't know how. She know her football. Take me to Pompano Beach and Boynton Beach, and you're uh -huh. growing up. Uh, what, kind of, what kind of an upbringing was it for you uh, that gave you the chance to succeed in football? Uh, it was, I say it was tough. It was tough. Um, I don't know, man. It, it was, it happened so fast. Like, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think about it, but Pompano Beach is crazy down there. My mom wanted us to get away from it, you know? Um, I moved to Boynton, like, middle school, probably seventh grade. Uh, I played football, I was still in youth football. I got to high school, ended up playing on the uh, varsity team my freshman season, went to Santa Lucia's. Uh, stuff didn't go out, well, go as planned. I was gonna move back to um, where I'm originally from, but Brown County, not in Pompano, but like around that area right. to go to another school. Then my grades was bad. I couldn't play my 10th grade season. Uh, got my grades back up, played 11th grade, 12th grade season. Did great, ended up getting offers from all type of team, all, all teams across the country. Uh, but Petrino told me he was gonna give me a try, you know, to, you know, compete. So ended up going to Louisville. What was it about your mom as a single mom at that mm -hmm. point, after you guys lost your dad, uh -huh. what was it about her that helped you grow into the person that you are now? The demeanor about everything, you know, uh, she felt like she was our father. You know, she treated us like man early. Like she didn't treat us like little boys, like watching over us. She gonna, gonna tell us to do stuff, and she gonna teach us as we going along, just like she our father. So, and then we seen her grind. You know, we seen the grind in her. So it's like. We can't just stop doing what we're doing and go do dumb stuff, you know, because we're not, you know, having both parents now. Just go to school. And I told her, I'm like, I'm going to go to the NFL. Like, I'm going to take care of you. That's what I told her. And what's that like now that you're here and you're able to help her out? It's, it's cool. What's the most gratifying thing that's happened regarding that? I bought her the car she told me she wanted when I was a kid, the Cadillac truck. Yeah. And I got it for her. I told her, I'm, I'm going to get you a first car with the first Cadillac truck. And I did. Do you remember the look on her face? It, she not surprised now because I told her. She wasn't surprised because I told her I was going to do it. I was like, let's go. Let's go get it. <laughs> she was smiling. She was happy, though. She was very happy. You lost your dad and your grandma the same day? Same day. 2005, same day. But your mom wouldn't let you cry? No, I didn't cry. I just didn't cry. She told us, not, well, you're right. Because she did tell us, she was like, um, don't cry, but 
Cause we was really like, okay, I found out my father passed first. Cause I was at the house actually, but I fell asleep. I'm always asleep. I fell asleep and then I wake up, my, like my cousin them crying, I hear it. I'm like, what y'all crying for? Oh, you know, my, your uncle Lamar, you know, my father. I'm like, what? And at first I start crying, then I just stop. And then, you know, everybody come to the house, all my family members. And my mom tell me, like, she got a phone call. My grandma was probably in Daytona or something like that. And she was like, um, your grandmother just passed. And I stayed with my grandmother too, like, all of us stayed in the same house. And she was like, don't cry. I'm like, you just told me don't cry. My grandma just died. Like, that was crazy. So it just had to be mentally tough uh, at a young age. Is that where some of your strength comes yeah, from? Yeah, I see that, yeah. Because mm -hmm. that's where your mom was. Right, mentally mm -hmm. strong. And she didn't cry. I couldn't cry because she a woman. I'm like, I'm not finna cry. She's not going to cry. So you're pushed everywhere you went. Louisville, NFL scouting combine, other colleges recruiting you. Yeah. You're pushed everywhere. Hey, did you ever think about returning punch? Ever think about being a running he back? Did. Ever think about being a wide receiver? Why wouldn't you change? Because I knew I'm I knew I already I'm a quarterback. That's all I played. Even my my first year ever playing 2004 is the first time I actually put on pads. Okay. But I've been playing football outside since probably 2001. You know, just outside, and I always knew how to throw for some reason. And it wasn't like I used to go watch people and like, oh, I'm gonna do this. Mm -hmm. I watched Reggie Bush. Like, that was the first guy I was really watching. Okay. He stepped on the scene, like, just making people miss reverse and feel. Like, I'm going to do that. Then I started watching Michael Vick. But I was already throwing the ball outside. And I remember my father, before he passed, it was, like, probably 2002. We were going in the backyard. He, like, my mom, like, he can throw it to the street. The football I had, it wasn't no NFL football. Right. But it was, like, size for me. He can throw it to the street. My mom always had that faith in me. He, like, no, he can't. Like, that's why I think, like, when Dallas said I can't do it, all right, I'm going to show you. Like, that's where it come from. My own father telling me this, nah, he can't do it. Go to the back, throw it all the way to the street. My mom like, I told you, I told you. <laughs> he was like, okay. No, but that's, anytime somebody said, tell me I can't do something, I'm gonna do it, like, I'm gonna do it. So when the teams came in and said, hey, you could be a first round pick as a receiver, uh, as a running back, is there any party that said, that sounds pretty good. Maybe no. I will make the move. No, not at all. We, we got a lot of great receivers out there in the league, you know, um, that's been doing it a long time, you know, been playing that position forever. They probably played quarterback, but they was always an athlete. Um, I always played quarterback throughout youth, middle school, high school. I never played anything else, so I'm not going to change it now. You know, I'm just going to compete with whoever else. And then you can tell me go, we can go from there, but I'm not just going to stop just because you said that. So and what did it mean when the Ravens told you, we want you as a quarterback? I told them they're going to get everything about me. We're going to win the Super Bowl. Definitely. Who are the quarterbacks you admire the most? Right now or yeah, when I was growing right up? Aaron Rodgers, I watched Russell Wilson, mm -hmm. uh, Tom Brady. I, I watched those guys a lot. Um, who else? What is it you like about? Even Mahomes. I like Mahomes' game too. What is, what is it you like about Rodgers? He just so advanced. Like, he's an athlete. Like, he, 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 he can move. You know, he make guys miss. Um, it's very dope just watching him play. You know, and he's been doing it for a long time, you know, not long as Brady, but he, he's been doing it quite a long time for me. Um, and he's just doing it still like he, he just got in the league, like he in his prime. So it's, it's pretty dope watching him still play. Now, there's not a lot of your game and Brady's game that people say, okay, I see. Similarities. I, I see yeah. where that works. Yeah, yeah. So what is it about Tom Brady that you see that you love? It's just his poise in the pocket. He just looked like he's so relaxed, like he on vacation. He just picked pick, pick defenses apart. And I want to be on that level. I, I just like watching him. I admire that. Did you say this year you hate to run? Yeah. Like I, You're 10th in the league in rushing. Yeah, not, not necessarily like I hate running, but if I have to or like the defense give me the look to run, I'll do it. You know, nobody's open, I'll run. But just to take off, I'm going to take the game in my hands, I'm going to run. No, I wouldn't do that. Like, i throw the ball, you know, but sometimes it's not open. So I just run. People just get caught up in how dynamic I run. Like, I make my runs and I make statements as I run but I can throw the ball too. What do you mean you make statements as you run? I'm going to somebody, I'll make somebody miss. I'm going to get a lot of yards, like stuff like that. When you got up to the podium after the first game this year and said not bad for a running back, mm -hmm. something was bugging you and it came out on that podium. What was bothering you? I just started seeing running back posts everywhere. So he a running back, he run a lot. Like, I mean, I just got in the, like, I just, what, week 11, I got in the, like, start of the season. 
with them. Like, I haven't been doing anything. You know, I've been going with like, the scout team guys, like the guys who I came in with who are not really out there yet. I've been practicing with them, and I didn't have any chemistry with the guys from last year, really. So that's why some of the passes would be out of whack, like outrageous passes. I used to get mad at myself. Like, I know I can make those passes. Like, ain't no way I'm missing these passes. But that's what the offseason for. What did you do this offseason to make yourself a better passing quarterback? So net down there, I got on that net. I worked on that net. I worked uh -huh. with Coach Josh Harris, my, my coach down at home. Uh, I worked with Coach Earl while I was here. We were um, talking hours a day? Uh, throughout the day. Uh, with Coach Josh Harris, I used to work like two hours with him. Mm -hmm. When I was home, probably like four days out of the week, I worked with him. And then I got I got back up here, talked to Earl. We worked. And then the guy from Tom House, Dave, he came, worked with him. He just showed us a little fundamental, like mechanics. To, you like know, what stuff have you improved like bring on? Like bring my hip through. Mm -hmm. When I throw, you know, um, keep my base wide. Um, mm -hmm. Like the throw motion the same. You know, you can't really change the throw motion, but just it was really like my hips and feet. Like that'll be the only thing that'll mess up a pass. And how gratifying is it when you go back and put on tape now in a game and you see the stuff you were working on on this field back this summer? I, I get mad. You get mad? I get mad. Why? I'm like, man, dang, like it would have been a big play. Like I feel like some of those passes I throw, it would have been a big play. Like I, my guy could have made something happen. and. I have stopped him from succeeding, so I get mad at myself. I'll ask you about two other things that happened this year. Steelers game, you're running, running to the sideline, you run into a woman who's working with the media on the sideline. I try to dodge her, but like, as I try to dodge her, I hit her with my elbow a little bit. I'm like, oh, man, like that, that, that ain't like, ain't like it at all. And, and then you reached out and DM'd her on Twitter the next day, right? Yeah, I was asking, was her head all right? Because I, I, I thought I hit it in her head, but she was like, she was good. And I was like, yeah, by the way, soft, soft hair. Yeah. <laughs> but, that, that, when other people brought that up to me, uh -huh. they said, that's who Lamar is. He's got yeah. a big heart and a big soul. Uh, do you like the fact that people are starting to see who you are as a person, not just a terrific running, yeah. passing, winning quarterback? <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm, I'm cool. People be like, you look mean. I'm like, no, I ain't mean. I'm the goofiest person ever. Like, <laughs> all I do is laugh. You know, all I do is crack jokes and stuff like that. I'm, I'm really not serious. Like, people take me serious on social media and stuff. I'm like, come on. like. But, you know, get to know me, it'll be better. You play in Seattle, you uh -huh. come over to Coach Harbaugh and you say, let's go for it here on fourth down. That's yeah. not the confidence usually that you see from a guy who hasn't even started a full season in the NFL. Yeah. Why'd you come over and feel compelled to say that to Coach Harbs? Uh, actually, I wasn't really, I was just ticked off. I'm like, man, we drove the ball down the field twice prior to that. Kick field goals, um, see how defense did a great job. They stopped us. We kick field goals, tuck, um, helping us out a lot, you know, like he do, the GOAT. He's and, pretty good. Yeah, and I'm tired of putting him on the field instead of just doing kickoffs instead of, you know, uh, extra points. We put him on for three points. I'm like, man, this drive, for some reason, that drive, it was like, oh, we can't get off the field right now because Russ just rolled him down and scored, and we didn't score at all. So. And I'm you've hot. seen that movie where Russ comes back down and gets score a winning score, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hot. I'm like, bro, we got to score. Like, we, we can't just keep kicking field goals. Like, we're not doing nothing. We're not putting any points on the board. Our defense, like, we, we're not motivating our defense. And actually, um, Marcus Peters caught a pick six before that. Right. And I, I know Russ was ticked off. He wanted to go score again. So it was like, man, we got to go score. And we drove the ball downfield. It was third and probably 19. Got stopped close, and I was hot. I'm going, the, I'm going to the side. I'm mad. Like man, what the, I'm cursing. I don't like. I don't want to curse, but like I was cursing. And then coach was like, "What you want to go for?" I'm like, "Like heck yeah, you know I want to go for it." Yeah. And I asked Marshall because you know he's the OG on the line. I'm like, "What you, you want to go for?" He's Marshall like, Yonder. Yeah. yeah. He's like, "Yeah." I'm like let's go there. I'm like we gotta go. We gotta get it. That, I had to get. It. I was gonna get it regardless. But that's real leadership. And some guys wait until they've been around the league three, four years. But you feel like you've found a comfortable place to do that with this team already. Why is that? I, I, I like to win. Like, we, we, we work so hard. You know, everybody around here want to win. That's why everyone's here in the, in the Ravens organization or in the King's Castle. And we, we can't be leaving out that field without scoring no points. Right. And they know I'm very competitive. Like, they, they see it. It can be a little five-yard pass in practice and I miss it. I'm hot. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm ticked off. So, man, it's just, it's just confidence, trust. You know, we're trying to build something here. Coach Harbaugh, when we did your game last year, he said to me, we're building this thing around Lamar. When we drafted him, we decided the whole organization, we got to build this thing for this style of play, and we're going to do it. What has been the biggest appreciation for you of the confidence that your head coach has in your abilities? Man, 
you seen it when we played Seahawks, um, able to go back out there and pull a tuck off the field, to have faith in me to go out there to, you know, convert that drive. That's that's the almighty trust right there. Man. All type of trust, man. You mentioned the GOAT before. Tom Brady's got that title. He definitely do. For quarterbacks. Definitely. So February 3rd, 2002, he wins his first Super Bowl. You know how old you were? What, what, you said 2002? Yeah. I was five. You're five. Yeah. And now here you are on Sunday night going up against them, both quarterback and first place teams. Yeah. How crazy is that? That's dope. <laughs> and he still look like he's young. So he's, he's, the only thing going up is his age, the number. Everything else, he still look the same. What's yeah. it going to be like to go up against him for the first time? It's going to be pretty cool after yeah. the game, but you know, before the game, I got. I'm trying to win. I'm, I'm focused on winning. I'm not focused on Brady. I'm focused on the Ravens and going what, six and two. You know, a lot of people, if they want to make comparisons to you, they're going to say, yeah, Michael Vick did this and Randall Cunningham yeah. did this. Would you rather comparisons to those guys or comparisons to Breeze and Brady? It really don't matter. Yeah. I'm, I'm myself. I'm neither of none, none of those guys. You know, those guys are their own man. Um, they done made their mark in the league. You know, they done had. Uh, all type of success, you know, but I'm my own guy, you know, and I'm just starting. I, I haven't did anything yet. I can't even fix my name to be put with theirs right now. You know, I, I haven't did anything yet, so I just got to keep winning. A couple other things. We sit in our room and watch all the games on Sunday, and we see you run and run and run. Yeah. And I got two legends sitting next to me. Tony Dungy sits here, Rodney Harrison sits okay. here. And the reaction's always, oh, man, Lamar, just don't run as much. You're right. taking too many hits. But I'm not. You're not? I'm not. I watch the game up close. I'm not really taking no hits. You, you got to figure it out. I want to say I got to figure it out. You know, um, it's in a given Sunday. You know, you can get hurt in practice sure. on a drop back. Uh, knock on wood. Yep. My guy Ted, Teddy Bridgewater got hurt mm -hmm. on a drop back. You know, so you can get hurt doing anything. You it don't matter if you run in. You can be scratching, hurt yourself. I, like, you know, I, I play ball to win. I don't worry about getting injured stuff like that. I just play it safe. So when you when you hear guys like us say. I don't know if he can last running this much. What do you say to us? All right. Uh, I can't say nothing. You guys, you guys got your own opinion. You know, I'm, I'm gonna play ball. I'm gonna do what got me here to help me succeed, um, to help my team keep winning. Uh, that's all I can do. I can't, I can't stop you guys from saying, saying nothing. Protect myself, you know. New England has legendary, um, let me put it this way. New England has been legendary for taking away the best thing the other team does. Right. So if Belichick comes to the line with a crowded box to try to take away your running and you have to pass to win the game, where are you at the point, this point in your career if somebody forces you to do that? I'm going to do it. Yeah. Definitely. I'm going to play pitch and catch like we're in the backyard if I got to. I'm going to play ball. Your confidence is growing in your ability to throw the ball now? Yes, sir. Where if Absolutely. you see a bloated box, you're good with that? I'm cool. Can I ask about cool for a second? This place had some huge personalities, uh -huh. like Ray and Ed back in the day, mm -hmm. right? And even when you got here, Suggs was here, uh -huh. Flacco was a Super Bowl winning quarterback, yeah. Eric Weddle was walking around here with all his experience. Now all those names are gone. Mm -hmm. And everybody tells me you're the leader of this group now. How have you been able to step into that role so easily? I don't really look at myself as a leader, you know. Um, if anything, lead by example, because I just go out there and play ball. Um, everybody know um, I'm trying to be the best that I can be to help my guys. You know, they helped me out, I helped them out. And that, that's how it is, we teammates. You know, you, you got the tight ends out here doing, blocking, catching passes, the linemen blocking, and I'm just being a field general, just doing my job. How much do you enjoy the role of being a leader? I love it, I love it. When I did the game with Kurt Warner, he pointed out that you hold the ball kind of the way he does a little bit. Can you just show me that and just talk about how that evolved for you? Um, I really don't know. Uh -huh. You know, uh, I just feel my, my hand fits the ball better like this. I can put power behind it. Um, Pinpoint it to my guys, that's mm -hmm. all. Put some more philosophy on it. That's how, I think that's why I have it like this. That index finger up there? Yeah, it, push. Have, have, push you, have you seen other guys who do that? No, I, I really don't pay attention to it. Yeah. Anybody try to change it? Yeah. What'd you tell them? See, it, I don't tell them nothing. My finger do it, just go back. <laughs> you go back to the same spot. <laughs> and lastly, music. What kind of music you like? What do you love? If, if you were gonna you're gonna pick out a, a song or two for the background for the Lamar Jackson feature on Sunday Night Football. What would it be? I listen to Kodak Black. That, that's my that's my friend. Um, he from where I'm from. Okay. So 
that, that's why I'm always gonna post his music regardless of what people may say of him, what they think of him, because you don't really know someone until you actually with them, you know? You can't really just judge them on what you heard of what you've seen, because you never know what's going on. So I'm gonna go listen to him, because he where I'm from, that's what I like to listen to. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.